Welcome back knitters, this is Janet with Pearl Together. In this week's technique video I want to show you the pinhole cast on. Now many of you are joining us for Amba's Advent Knit Along. We are collaborating and doing daily vlogs this month and it's a ton of fun and one of her patterns requires uh, that you knit squares from the center out. Her pattern just uses the long tail cast on which is is fine, it's very simple and it's a good way to get started. I think the pinhole cast on might be a little bit better just because it I tend to have some trouble keeping things um, tidy, <laughs> I guess, and tight when I'm casting on with several double pointed needles. So I found the pinhole cast on to be handy for that because you can just go zoop and cinch it right up. So before we get started with that, I want to welcome two new patrons in the last week or so. A big shout out and a thank you to supporting the channel to Pamela and Betty. Thanks so much. If you want to see how to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together. Peanut would be grateful if you did. <laughs> he just walks through whenever he feels like it. Head on over there and check out what I'm offering for your small monthly pledge. Let's get started. All right, the pinhole cast on can be good for lots of things where you might want to cinch up the middle and have it be tight. So all I'm gonna do here is have my working yarn, my tail toward me, the working yarn up here, and I'm just gonna do a little loop around my fingers. Okay, so again, the, the tail is toward me, the working yarn is up here, and I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around my fingers one time toward me. Then I'm just gonna kind of hold on to that, and uh, I might want a little bit of a longer tail, so I might kind of you know slide that loop up a little bit, have a little bit of a longer tail, like four to six inches. Okay, so then I'm gonna take a DPN of the size I'm using for my project, or circular needles, either one, and I'm going to go ahead and put that through the loop. And I'm going to you know, kind of hold this on my finger at the same time. Okay, I'm just pinching with my thumb and I have the loop going around my two fingers and I'm just putting, putting this needle in. Then I'm going to take this just like I'm knitting and I'm going to wrap it and just do a knit stitch like normal into that loop and pull it through the loop and up. Okay, easy. Now I'm going to wrap the other way like I'm doing a backwards yarn over. So I'm going to bring the yarn toward me, go around clockwise, and we're going to pretend that that's our next knit stitch. So if you need some help, you can, you can, you can just pinch really close right here at the base of this first stitch and bring that loop that you just made counterclockwise, bring that through. Okay, I'll show you that a couple more times, so don't worry. Now we're just going to go back into the loop over your finger, knit into that like normal. Okay, we've knitted into that. Now we need to do our backwards yarn over thing where we go counterclockwise. And now we want to have this, the second loop, this one here, the loop that's in the middle, we want to have that go over the counterclockwise wrap we just made. Now that's a little bit more difficult now to keep this first one out of our way. So what I'm going to do this time is hold everything with my middle finger and I'm going to grab the other end of my circular needle or a double point. That'll work too. And then I'm just going to go underneath. Let me focus a little better here. I'm going to go underneath this loop and lift it over the top. Just like when we do a regular bind off. Okay, just carefully lift that over the top. All right, now you have two cast on stitches going. We only need eight for this project, so I'll show you all eight and make sure you've got the technique down. So we're going to go back into our big loop, knit into that like normal, wrapping counterclockwise as you normally would. Bring that up not super tight, and then pinch here. I like to just pinch it, keep everything together while I'm going counterclockwise, because that feels really intuitive. We're not used to going that way. Hold everything together while you get your other needle, then slip under that second one and pull it over the first. See, I'm keeping my middle finger in the back there just to make sure that I don't drop anything, okay? And then we're just gonna carry on doing that. So I've got three. Knit into that like normal, counterclockwise wrap, lift the second stitch over your counterclockwise wrap that you just made. You know, and if you need to take your middle finger here and kind of scooch that down and keep it in place so it doesn't pop off the end of your needle, then absolutely do that. 
Okay, so we have four. We're looking good here. Don't worry about the size of this. Just make sure you don't lose your tail because what's going to happen, you guessed it, we're going to cinch this whole thing up like a purse string when we're done. Okay, so again, go into the big loop like you're knitting because you are. All right, and then we're going to draw that back up, do our count, do our clockwise wrap, which feels weird, but we're doing it. And then hold that, hold everything with your middle finger behind on the back of that needle, slip that second one over the top of the first one. Okay? All right, good job. Three more. Knit, knit into the big loop. All right, counterclockwise. Grab the second one, slip it over the first one without splitting a stitch like I did. Okay? All right. Now we, that's looking pretty tidy, isn't it? So we have three more. Sorry, two more. Can't count. You'd think I could count to eight by now, right? Okay, now I got almost away from myself there and forgot what I was doing. I did my counterclockwise loop and I'm going to lift this over the top. One more. Knit into the big loop. Bring it back around. Draw it through like normal. Counterclockwise loop. Lift the second one over the counterclockwise backwards yo you just did. All right, straighten everything out. Now you have eight stitches on here, which how I, which is what I need. Two, four, six, eight. That's what I need to start my throw. So you guessed it. We're gonna take this tail and pull. Okay, I'm going to wait to pull it all the way up until I have my magic loop going the way that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this down, divide my stitches in half for my magic loop project. So I just pinch my needle, I'll have four on each side of the pinch, okay, and then bring that back up. Okay, I'm going to bring this up to so where I'm not creating a ladder, everything is tidy, pretty tidy. All right, so you can see this is my working yarn. This is the part I want to cinch, and I have that tail kind of twisted around in there, so I'm going to straighten that out. I know this feels kind of fiddly in the beginning, and it is, but it'll work. It'll work out. Just persevere. Hang in there with me. My, I'm not left-handed. Okay, then all I'm going to do here, you can watch this, is I'm going to cinch this tight. Okay, whoop! I love that. And there we go. That is a nice, tidy pinhole cast on. Now I'm going to start simply going around and around, knitting around and around a magic loop the way that I would. You can absolutely do the same technique with two circulars or a series of double points, whatever you need to do. To, and then I'm just going to start knitting around in the pattern that I'm using. Okay, now I'm going to show you the whole thing again using double points, which admittedly is going to feel a little more fiddly, but not really. Um, because you don't have to use all four double points or five even right initially. So again, I'm going to start with my working yarn, or the sorry, the, I'm going to start with my tail toward me, the working yarn off to the side here, and I'm just going to take two fingers and wrap this one time around just to create a loop. Okay, same as before. We're going to put the needle inside, do one wrap because we're knitting, and bring that through. Same, same. Do your counterclockwise wrap. And now you can go and get your second double point or do it with your fingers. Oh my gosh, can you tell one of my cats chewed on the end of that one? I'm not sure what their problem is with wood, but they love it, especially bamboo. And then we're gonna just gonna bring that over the top. Okay, same thing. Knit right into the big circle. Counterclockwise wrap. Take the second loop over the first. Okay, so carry on doing all eight. Okay, I have all eight stitches on here now and here's my big loop. So what I want to do here I think is go ahead and divide my stitches onto my four, three or four double pointed needles. You do whatever you need to for your pattern. As I said, the specific pattern that I'm knitting, the Radvent throw, requires me to begin with eight stitches, but your pattern may be a different number, and that's totally fine. I'm just going to divide this into three or four double points, depending on what your preference is and how many you have in your set and, you know, how many you prefer to work with. So I will probably do three to start with, and I may add a fourth as things get a little bit 
you know, as I've done a few around or two and things get a little bit more established. But it is, you know, a little fiddly to juggle too many double points right initially in the beginning of the pattern. So I'm, I've got my three here and you can tell I've got my little circle going and I could do four if I wanted to, but here's my tail. So I'm just going to pull on that and draw everything up in. And isn't that fantastic how neat and tidy that is in the middle? I love that just because it's so tight and tidy. Now just don't make the mistake of knitting with your tail like I do. But there's your beginning of the round. You could always put a little uh, locking stitch marker on there if you want and then start your pattern round and round. And again, since my pattern is a square, I will add that fourth double point once I have a few more stitches on there and then I'll work with the fifth one. But that's certainly a personal preference. Hey, thanks for watching. If you find these videos to be helpful, consider subscribing, hitting the like button, the little bell notifications, and I'll see you next time.